Right. Yeah. These two things actually are, are playing together in the hands of the pastors. Absolutely. Now, 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 for me to come to think about the concept of Abafundis, mm. I felt like we, we need to talk our diversities and let's laugh at our own religion our own Christianity. Let's laugh at it and also let us cross-question it because there's so many things that are happening in Christianity which are not biblical best but there is just a, 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 a Jewish culture mm. imposed and, and the on the church. Culture. European if it culture. was Jewish it would be better okay. because we would have been, we would have been holding chauffeurs. So, so, we would so, have been so. putting on talits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would have been doing shavots. We would have been doing Pentecost things. Yeah, 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 of, yeah. If, if it was Jewish imposition. Mm. Mm -hmm. But for us to be fighting over ties and jackets and hymns mm -hmm. and, and pianos and, and guitars being played in church, I think we are even giving the Jewish people too much credit. Absolutely. The real criminals here it's Europeans. are not Jews. They are actually Europeans mm. who have taken European culture as the superior culture over Christianity. Absolutely. And a European does not need to change to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. But an African must become European first. Yes. Before he can become Christian. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. So so I think for me, I, I, I had a concept that I said, let's let's talk about it. Mm. L let's bend the country. Let mm. let people let people start uh, to contribute to this uh, program, to this narrative. And uh, what I saw in season one mm. including pastors mm. and believers at large were confused. Of their own confusion which is happening in the body of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> they were confused. <laughs> Over. They all go, you know what you're saying, Peter? Yeah, uh, many people many people thought that they had problems with us. Yeah. Only to discover they have a problem with themselves. Yes. Yeah. Because they, these things they've been aware of them, but they've never looked at them. Mm, mm. Now because you are saying it. People now call you the enemy of the church. Absolutely. Said, no, man, I'm not the enemy of the church. I'm not the one who's collecting your tithe. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not the one who is, who, who, who is pouring holy water on you mm, and mm, making mm. you eat flowers. It's not me. Mm. But now you want to condemn me for saying this is wrong. Mm. You know? Absolutely. Because also, also what, what was interesting in the, in the show of our, our Fundacy, uh, many Nani believers mm. could relate to us. Mm. And many Christians were attacking us. Mm. My question was, are you attacking us because we are opening your eyes about those pastors and bishops and prophets mm -hmm. who are exploiting your monies, mm -hmm. who are exploiting your salaries? Are you attacking us? Why can't you come back to your senses and say, you know what, thank you for waking us up from the sleep mm -hmm. and look for a way of moving on in the name of Christ. Now, let's, let's take a small little short break. And I would want us to move into the greater space of Pentecostalism and how the show of Abafundis actually ruffled feathers from the you know, human rights and uh, CRL commissions to local churches to some of the local pastors actually standing before the courts, also being dragged into commissions for inquiries and how the whole community also was hit by COVID in the midst of all this, all this big pot was boiling from the information that was being received to COVID that was into the space and how right now the South African community and the greater African community at large has begun to ask the intelligent question. The African child is waking up from sleep. It's no longer as easy as it used to be that you just walk up in front of people and say, God loves you, God loves you. You must qualify yourself. After the break, let's now start unpacking the show of Abafundis with Pastor Piri and Pastor Miyama. Don't go away. We'll be back right back.
need to eat healthy food because it's delicious. Make massive moves. Would you like another one? I love it. I love this soup. This is amazing. The grits are so creamy. Oh, I take pride in my grits. No, so flavorful. I think that looks wonderful. Yeah. It's so incredible. Make messy moves with Star Side. Make massive moves. Bible is human and divine. It's important for us to remember. And I'm part of God's story. God is sending you. God says what he means, and he means what he says. God is good. I am very grateful to God. I am healed. Amen. Make massive moves with Starside. Sankofa, where we are discussing uh, the formulation, the design, the running of the show of Abba Fundi C, and what went in behind the scenes, mm. and how did you end up there? So, Piri, mm. let's start with you. Mm. You drove to my house. Yes. What were you looking for exactly? Because, <laughs> uh, 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 first and foremost, I've been following you for many years. Mm. I used to come to Apostle Stolis Church in Davidson, mm. and I would listen to you speak, and mm. uh, I fell in love with you. Mm. Mm. And also, but the correct love. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going that avenue. <laughs> I fell in love with you. Then, uh, I, I read also about uh, about uh, the the issue of uh, human rights commission that you've been dragged there mm. for being um, homophobic. Mm. And uh, and uh, because I loved your ministry, mm. and on the other side, I'm stuck with Reverend Muema, mm. <laughs> whom I, I'm trying to find a way if maybe God can help him and deliver him, mm. number one. And give him a wife. And give him a wife. Okay. Or number two, yeah. I can surrender him to you, then you can psychologically and program him and reprogram him again. No. So that he can be what? <laughs> <laughs> so that was why you what happened that, in your that's mind. the reason uh, that's what this this is what i was thinking in my mind so okay. no, maybe maybe this thing helps because mm. I, I know some time back mm. i can mention on the show because um i'm close to mboro mm. mboro i'm told he prayed for dr love who happens to be our friend mm -hmm. and dr love said god has delivered him he's no longer gay <laughs> then uh, then six months later Oh, Dr. Love says to be a food. I say we had it in the backside. So he's, he's back there again. Where is he? Where is he, where is he going back to now? To, to back to, to, to his. Uh, oh, yeah. To okay. him coming back to himself. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so, so this is the reason why I'm coming to you. Okay. And also at the same time, because we can't deny the fact that uh, there is a lot of gay people in our churches. Mm. In every worship team, there's one or two. Mm. In uh, almost. Uh, every charismatic church I know. Mm. I can't speak on behalf of mainline churches. Mm -hmm. I felt this is a burning issue. Mm -hmm. Maybe let us discuss it and, uh, and, 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 and deal with it and see if perhaps we can perhaps, perhaps mm. come up with answers through the learned uh, Bishop, mm. B uh, Bishop Joshua Maponga III. When, mm. when, when, when he says to you he's coming, he's going to be introducing uh, 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 Maponga J to you. Yeah. What, what was going on through your mind with the background that you had received about the human rights issues? Uh, I, I quickly focused on the human rights issue. <laughs> and I, re I read and reread. I made few calls. I spoke with other stakeholders in the LGBTQI, you know, leadership space and picked up their views. And I said, you know what, I am going to be sitting in the same table with this man who I think for now is our arch enemy. Okay. And I don't think Piri has thought this very well to pair us together because we are sitting on opposite sides. Um, I am a leader in this space. 
and I stand for my tribe. And he's a protagonist on the other end. Yeah, yeah. I said, hey, there's going to be animosity here. Uh, I don't know how we are going to find a common ground. Mm. But then he said, he's my friend. Yes, you, you are my friend also. You are my friend. <laughs> You Peter's, can't. Got, Peter's got conflicting friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Strange bad fellows. <laughs> Strange bad fellows. I'm like, okay. Maybe based on the relationship you have, our common ground is that we are meeting around a friend. Mm. And that could ease, you know. It becomes uh, a referee. Yeah, that could ease the conversation going forward. But I had mixed feelings like, do I really need to meet the gentleman? I don't Me too. Yeah. Are you not feeling sorry for me? Yeah. Am I in trouble with with with, yeah. with, 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 with Do you want me to human rights commission? Yeah. And you are bringing this man. <laughs> but you know what? But I didn't make it it was not even easy the first time we met. I think it was quite a quite a heated uh, argument there. No hey. He says you are practicing sexual tourism. Hey I even forgot in that you way. <laughs> and it was a, how dare you how dare you like yes. <laughs> so I was steaming and I went volcanic. I said, I really dare mm. that you speak about my trap like that. Mm. It cannot mm. never in our life be done. But I thank you, uh, uh, you know, for us to grow, sometimes we don't have to lean on what is already easy. Mm. We have to sometimes take off our guards and our shields mm. and put them down and open our minds to even discussions that are uncomfortable because the truth for most of the time is very uncomfortable. Uh, and to have this type of hard talks are not very easy mm. because it was not a scripted discussion. Mm that these are the questions I even ask, hey, um, producer, do we have a script for this? Do I know what sort of questions will be coming? So it was like, no. You and own. We, I think we must also give compliments yeah. to Ted Strand, to Percy, all due respect. Yes. I think he did, yeah. he did, he did a good yeah. job. Yeah. First time putting mm. us together and on the table. The show to yeah. the table. So it was very raw. Yeah. Was no, no script. No, no script. script. Yeah. yeah, it was not very raw. It's like, I don't know what's going to come up. You didn't know what was going to come up from me. And my friend also didn't know how am I going to say. Uh, and, and you said, hey, I know you are gay, but you are on your own. Babe. And I'm like, it's no longer pro me on my sexuality. But I also love that that table was full of positive, receptive energy. Mm. that guided what could have been boiling water to becoming calm water. And we were all on a learning curve. And, and some curves were very sharp and uncomfortable. Mm. I remember someone wrote and said, <laughs> 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 And I said, Umvil. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what you want? Yeah. He's coming from his bush also. Yeah. So, uh, 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 and some of the things were uncomfortable, but I've learned in the discourse of my life that anything related to human existence mm. should be brought on the table yeah. and should be brought explicitly mm. so yeah. that, you know, we are learn and learn and we can deal with prejudices and we can deal maybe with miseducation mm. Mm. about certain issues of our existence, mm. especially when it comes to the cycles and the rings of diversity. 
you know, on all levels from personal, social, and organizational. And when we have to deal also with things like the, this dynamics of what is a strong culture, and there we are dealing with powers, mm -hmm. you know, dominant the, cultures, dominant cultures, mm -hmm. and the, the, and the submerged cultures of the marginalized, and you know, it's all power play. And the quote unquote, we give it culture. This is how we were socialized. Mm. And sometimes we were socialized with fear. Mm. Mm. And we are tormented. Uh, as the word phobia from Latin says, phobia simply means fear. Mm. And how John says, love has got no fear. Perfect love casts out all fear because fear torments. Mm. So we are socialized to be afraid of that which is different. And whereas even the beginning of creation, uh, creation was created on a wide platform of diversity. Diversity mm. and each and every diverse contrasting thing that was created, God said it is good. Mm. If he says light, he said there's a light, there's a light that is bigger, the sun, the light that is smaller, you know, the stars and in between light and the, and the moon mm. and all of this cannot exist without darkness. Mm. So darkness must exist for light to shine through. Mm. And the, the, the life of diversity also has these contrasting nuances that sometimes we are afraid to bring them on the table. What calls out to us to as and and then Zitetwa, when people find themselves in courts, when uh, parents find their children pregnant suddenly, when they discover that a child has just constructed uh, HIV and other things, it's only then people start to talk. Whereas I believe if everything was in the open, it would save us from a lot of unnecessary mm -hmm. trouble, even in church, mm -hmm. because we just come with many scriptures, but we don't deal with the real issues. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't think a lot of churches would even have a conference of young people but we want you to understand your your very broad sexual space mm. just to understand it regardless of your orientation that biologically this is what is happening in your life now you are turning 13 14 you are going to go through a menstrual cycle and you must understand everything about ovaries and blah 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 it means you can be pregnant if certain things are inserted in you and certain juices are left in there mm. at 15 and 16 but places of worship if we we, we open they exclude such a yeah, yeah to to have yeah. such conversations mm. It, it will help. Yeah. Let, me throw, let me throw to you, Piri. Yeah. We, thank you very much for that yes. insight. I think you bring quite some interesting uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ob observation there. Yeah. Piri, you, we, we, we actually moved in yeah. yes. to uh, the, 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 the show yes. uh, in the backdrop. Mm. of that. Yes. My, my problem with you, yeah. as a Pentecostal, for example, mm. Mm. and as an evangelical, mm. is that I don't want to take one brush and, and paint well, yes. all Pentecostals together, mm. in as much as we don't want to do that on xenophobic yeah. and yeah. Afrophobia. Yeah. 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 But you remember, in late uh, 2016, mm. 2017, 2018, mm. 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 we started off with the uh, snake things mm. in, uh, in, in Hamanskral. Mm. It went on to doom. Mm. It went on to grass. Mm. It went on to flowers. Mm. Mm. Then the Omotoso story mm. burst onto the platform. It went mm. on to the resurrection. Then it went on to the resurrection. Mm. Here come Fundis mm. Lukao. Mm. Uh, this is no secret. I mean, mm. I'm not going to be afraid. It's it went, all of, it, it yeah. went on yeah. even to, yeah. the, to, the, to the lawsuits. Mm. Here come Fundis Upushiri. Mm. And it, it, this whole combination of all these events coming mm. together, mm. and all of them pointing, this is according to yeah. me, mm. pointing towards the event evangelical and the Pentecostal story. Yes, mm. the mainstream churches like the Catholics, for example, mm. and the Anglicans, mm. including Adventists and Methodists, mm. have had rapes mm. and, and uh, mm. abortions. They are all little but shenanigans. It, but managed, yes. managed at a denominational level and yeah. with, with correct mm. denominational management mm. tools. Yeah. Though some of them were man manipulated mm. due to the power of the church over the state, mm. and those cases are rubbed underneath. Mm. But mm. you at least, mm. for example, the fact that you were chased away from your church, mm. 
mm. because you you had made your w girlfriend pregnant. Mm. He, 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 we don't condone it mm. that they chased you away. Mm. But to an extent, you want to say there is some amount of order, mm. there is some amount of supervision, mm. there is some amount of our pity. Mm. Be accountable. Mm. Yeah. You cannot say you are leading and you are mm. doing this. Mm. But now when you have this mushrooming up of these new churches, mm. where someone sings two songs, mm. the third song they pastor. Yeah. Mm. They, they they just go for one conference. Mm. They receive a spirit, mm. a, a, a mm. gift of apostleship. Mm. Mm. And I can tell you within four days, mm. they've opened up a church. Yeah. Mm. The fact that you have received a spiritual calling mm. or a pastoral calling mm. does not mean that you are qualified mm. to run for it. David was anointed as king. Mm. How many years did he take years. before he could um, uh, mount up into the throne? Mm. Mm. And therefore you find that all this mushrooming up of these young churches mm. who come around mm. in the morning, some of them are still single. Mm. They've not even gone through mm. the emotional issues mm. of marital mm. understanding mm. that they could say they are stable. Mm. They run into the space now where they're going to be having four or five hundred members mm. in their spaces. Mm. They are vulnerable mm. at a marital and at a spiritual level. Yeah. But they're already exercising power. Mm. And while they're exercising power, counseling is already coming in the offices. Mm. Yeah. I'm not sleeping with my husband. Yeah. Mm. My husband's got sugar, sugar diabetes. Mm. And this is not happening. This mm. is not happening. Before mm. the young man notices, mm. he is actually exposed himself to a variety of challenges yeah. mm. which the calling mm. did not prepare him. Yes. The fact that God has called you does not mean that he has equipped you mm. with the software mm. to deal with the challenges that are going to be facing. Mm. I'm coming to my conclusion. Mm. When you find all this plethora mm. of these Pentecostal evangelical young ministers, yes. who wake up in the morning and they are now practicing in churches mm. under the power of God, mm. showing the miracles mm. of God, mm. and with all these things mm. that are happening. Mm. I just want to find out from you as pastors, had we not stood up to say this is wrong, where do you think this thing was going, Peter? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was going to go unabated. Um, and remember, Paul's prodigy, Timothy, Paul said, study to show Just yourself approved. approved. Proverbs says, stir up your gift, and it will make you a space amongst kings and rulers. And kings and rulers are people who are informed by massive knowledge and wisdom. Mm. And they won't just approve anything that is uh, fly by night mm. and it's not complete. Because, I mean, let's, let's, if anyone who's a repository of intelligence is not going to have tolerance of um, <clears throat> kindergarten in knowledge and information. You, you won't even enjoy having a discussion with that person. You'll be like, no. Because we can't deal with issues. Yeah. Uh, Credible or quality. Uh, uh, we are no. here. Yeah, yeah. In my uh, village, when you have weaker minds, they yeah. say, yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. While, while the adults are discussing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But please, give him a knife, let yeah. him go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I also want to comment yeah. on that, uh, yeah. um, uh, Bishop. Yes. You know, you know when uh, God called me into ministry mm. yes. over 27 years ago, mm. Mm. Uh, ministry was not as lucrative as it is today. Yeah. In fact, when I told my father that I wanted to be a pastor, mm. the first question asked me was, uh, do you want to be a professional beggar? Because in those days, mm. pastors were perceived to be beggars. beggars and uh, yeah. everyone that was called in those days, mm. I perceived them to be sound because mm. they understood in what they were going into. Mm. Mm. Now, for the past few years, mm. ministry has become lucrative where people think it is a money-making machine mm. and, and, and it has attracted the and right. it has become a money-making yeah, machine. Of course. Mm. It yeah. has attracted the right and the wrong mm. within mm. the framework of Charismatics and Pentecostals. There are mm. those that are really called by God. Mm -hmm. And mm. also there are those with, with criminal yes. elements. I think mm. we need to uh, distinguish those ones that are criminals. How do you know this pastor is a criminal? It's easy. And to this know. one is a man of God. It's, it's, How do you it's know? It's easy to know. If you're involved in money laundering, mm. is money laundering a crime? Let the 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 the, 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 the state uh, the state prosecute you. Mm. Not they mustn't prosecute you as a pastor, they must prosecute as you as a, as a civilian, as a, yeah. and, as a criminal. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. For example, uh, I remember when uh, Mkwanazi was the head of the of the commission. Sierra Leone. Yes, and I had a, a, a meeting with her in Cape Town, and I asked her uh, one question to say, you know what? Why do you say pastors must be investigated? 
because one person, one pastor fed mm. grass mm. to the people. Mm. Why can't you, the, 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 the Department of Health, mm. Lay a charge at SAPS mm -hmm. against that pastor mm -hmm. and prosecute him mm -hmm. on the, the crime, basis of violating <laughs> health and diet. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with giving them grass. Mm -hmm. But is the health grass healthy? Mm -hmm. Is it clean? Mm -hmm. Is it edible? Mm -hmm. Is it is it legal? Absolutely. Is it is it is it worth giving people grass? If you give mm -hmm. people snakes, for example, mm -hmm. SPCA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Must, if you drive cars, that other mm -hmm. boy in Sosha mm -hmm. who put people on the floor and he was driving his car on top. There's nothing wrong with you demonstrating the power of God. Mm. But call OSHA, mm. health and safety, mm. in case your miracle fails. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the ambulance mm. and other things mm. to cover for this mess. Mm. And because you cannot just end this one who was walking and kicking pregnant women mm. Mm. in the stomach and stuff mm. like that. And say, yes, you want to show the power of God mm. that I can kick you and the child will not die. But in the event the woman starts bleeding and there's a, there's a hemorrhage and mm. a miscarriage mm. there, do you have backup? And for me, this is where my mind goes mad. Do we really need to demonstrate the power of God in such to a careless such an manner? Stand of of, 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 of negligence, mm. even violating mm. human basic respect, yes. where dogs are peeing outside and mm. donkeys are pooing, mm. you go and say eat grass there. Is it healthy? No. Mm. No. And those people must be arrested as criminals, not as pastors. Mm. You know, because mm. just like we're talking about, for example, you know, mm. we are we we are fighting against uh, uh, gender-based violence. Yes. Yeah? And I'll tell you, almost every man I know mm. who's in my circle mm. stands against violating that rule or fighting or, 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 or um, abusing children and abusing women. Mm. You know? So 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 you find sometimes uh, very few people are doing it mm. and all men They've become suffer. Dogs. Mm. They've become dogs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. oh, very few pastors are doing that and all of us mm. suffer. So, mm. but, but maybe the, the reason that happens mm. is, uh, and, and I had a conflict, and I will mention this even in public space, mm. with Pastor Koto, mm. she, Dr. Koto, yeah. Pastor Koto, yeah. where mm. the issue of peer review became important or becomes important. Yes. That if we are ministers, all of us, mm. and we say we have accepted the calling, mm. At least amongst ourselves, by the time you buy a jet, I hear you've bought a Bentley, I hear you've bought a house. Mm. As a friend, I must say, Imshan, mm. how is the condition of your members? Mm. Yeah. I think you're overdoing it. Mm. Can you... Mm. Can we employ some discretion? Please, brother, and, please, yeah, brother, yeah, please, brother. Yeah, I think yeah. you're going too far. Yeah. You're going too far. Yeah. Yeah. We, we also get stressed. Mm. Sometimes you end up drinking. And mm. <laughs> <laughs> you end up drinking. And you are also eating it. We understand that you are under pressure and you are yeah. under yeah. stress. Yeah. But please, you are having six. Can you can you do two? <laughs> can you do three? And mm. we, because there is some amount of yes. of conversation yeah. that is happening. Yeah. Yeah. But when ministers become standalone, mm. where I have received my calling, mm. I I talk to no one. I take advice from no one. Mm. Me, I only work with yeah, God. Yeah. Mm. And in the midst of being a loner working with God, you find that these things and this and I want to ask a simple question. Mm. To what extent are ministers pushing to demonstrate the power of God in the church? And when people now know that you have the power of God, what advantage do you have? And how does that play in terms of your membership? Hmm. I think a lot of people who run for miracles are desperate and vulnerable yeah. people who embrace quick solutions and looking for quick solutions, who don't understand that life is about the cycle of processes and mm. time management. Even if you are promised that you are going to go to the promised land, you see the promised land, but you go back to preparing how to navigate towards the promised land and what are the requisite skills for you to achieve to occupy yeah and to use the promised yeah. land you know uh, now in ministry people are called by god because uh, god when he calls everyone he will show them the end before the beginning yeah. but what is so important is that 
you don't rush to the end. Mm. You take baby steps and develop. Even Christ is written that he grew and he was loved by all people because mm. he had developed emotionally, intellectually, and social. Mm. He had decorum. He understood all the structures of power and how to deal with people. Now, I don't see an 18-year-old who's anointed by God, who has got gifts, running a complex ship like a church, mm. where he's going to be in charge of an elderly person who's 70, who is 40, and these people are raising children. And this is going to be dating. Yeah. And, and maybe making a few kisses before he finds Mrs. Wright. Exactly. And some of those things are in his church. How will exactly. that pan out? Yeah, yeah. So mm. so rather I, I love the, the, the mainline churches that even if someone now is ordained, uh, has their theological degree, but they have to go through maybe two years under another yeah. pastor yeah. or three years before they can be released to have their own to uh, manage the risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that they have been washed with their awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how you do things. Uh, uh, for you to work uh, uh, the ministry successfully. Uh, one, two, three, four, five mm. are things that must be done by you. If you don't do them, you'll never have a. I, mean, I did five successful. years. I yeah. did five years under Pastor yeah. Jelle, yeah. who was the senior. They gave me. They gave me a district in yeah. Lower Guelo, yeah, and uh, uh, which is called Skombingo, mm. and uh, we shared a border. Yeah, with Pastor Jelle, who was yeah. running the mission school yeah. at, Lo at, at, at thing. So yeah. all my church boards. Yeah, I would go to him first mm. and present to him what mm. I was going to be discussing. Yeah, and he would advise me how to. Yeah. And while I'm running my, my services, without announcing, he would pop in, mm. come and check me doing some stuff. Mm. After the session, calls mm. me aside, mm. young man, you don't say that. Mm. You don't work like that. Mm. Come, please come to my house yeah. okay, next week. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Mm. And, so, and so for five years, uh, literally, yeah. I was under, yeah. under, under a senior, an old man, Pastor Jelly. Yeah. And, and you're grilling me almost daily. And mm. how are you, young man? Where mm. are you? Come here now. Mm. And we'll be working on his garden together and working. Mm. But I learned quite a lot, a lot yeah. in terms of, because yeah. I had the academic background. Yeah. He had the Experience. experience. He did not have a degree, I had a degree. Mm. But he had more than 40, 50 years of 60 years of pastoring. Yeah. I had zero. Yeah. I only had six, seven years of academic work. Yeah, you just have theory. <laughs> and the theory. Yeah. So, and for me, for, for, for me to mix up the, the experience with that, the, yeah. it gave me quite a good, solid yes. uh, landing ground. So, yes. What did you want to achieve in, in, on this show in terms of the big picture? What did you want to achieve? <laughs> what I wanted to achieve, uh, mm. uh, Bishop, like I said earlier, that I come from the Dutch Reformed Church. Mm. In the Dutch Reformed Church, you had to go th read, study the catechism, mm. you know, and uh, that's why you, you, you get the basics, the basic concept of the mm. Bible. Mm. And wh what I, when I moved into the charismatic circles, I discovered mm. that in the charismatic circle, there's no catechism. There's, there's no catechism. Is the, mm. we, we catechism as we go along. Yes. Mm. If I can bring, if I can tell the church to say, mm. okay, each individual for them to be confirmed mm. as members of the church mm. must undergo this book for three years. Mm. By the time that uh, three years, three years finished. finished, people mm. would have already moved out of that church. Mm. So in the charismatic, we don't have that uh, uh, privilege. Mm. So I felt, let us do catechism mm. on TV. Mm. Let, let, let us discuss issues which people are afraid of discussing on television. Mm. You know, and, and for me, I, 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 having you, uh, Bishop Maponga, mm. a philosopher and mm. a theologian, mm. and also um, a, co a social commentator, mm. and, 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 and Reverend Muema, mm. I felt we gave justice to the public. Yes. You know, that's why even people today are mm. crying, the one they saw back. Mm. You know, because we were on a platform like Moja Love. Moja mm. Love is not TBN or One Gospel mm. or any of the Christian. It's a secular space. It's a secular, secular space. space yeah. and, the, the amount of information which people got within those episodes we, we, mm. we did is mm. just amazing. So mm. I feel at least, the, you know, I, I, I fulfilled what I envisioned. Mm. But uh, season two mm. is going to be very crazy. It's going to be very crazy. <laughs> and from your, from, your, from your corner, from your corner, from your corner, what was the response? Because I think people were expecting me and you. To, to, to kill each other uh, before hey. episode. Not before. people. Hey. I actually. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, there's a nice tweet here where you had a photograph together. Yeah. Uh, and in that photograph, he was like, you know, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And somebody said, I so much wish. 
ngabe bekabambe lesasitaba nesomfundisi wathi I read that and I laughed and I said, oh my word. Stay around with us, stay around with us. When you come back after the break, I'm having a good time with my friends here, exploring the greater Christian space and what um, sort of challenges are we facing as the modern Christian church and how as pastors are we responding to the diverse, to the diverse cultural norms and uh, religious and theological interpretations mm -hmm. that are coming onto the space. When you come back after the break, I think we'll pick up maybe just one or two issues around the greater space of a uh, Christian conversation in terms of theological and dogmatic formulation. Mm. We'll be back right after the break. The 21st century has not gone away without a spectacle. I think we will go down in history as one of the most dramatic churches in the history of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Because in our generation, we've also had to deal with quite, quite some interesting mm -hmm. perspectives. Mm -hmm. Over and above, of course, mm -hmm. the breaking of barriers on the same-sex marriages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Over and above, the breaking away of the formal churches mm -hmm. into the besting of Pentecostal churches, mm -hmm. where basically we are coming out of the 19th century mm -hmm. with maybe 200, 300 churches. Mm -hmm. By the time we get to the end of 21st century with 37,000 churches, mm -hmm. I think by now there were 38, mm -hmm. or 39, with the church being born almost every day. Mm -hmm. You know, in some mm -hmm. countries like Nigeria, mm -hmm. a, building, mm -hmm. a building, a building, a double-story building could actually have 30 to 40 churches mm. running on shifts mm. while others are going down, others are going in. And the budget of five churches is equivalent to the budget of the whole country. Mm. Where, 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 but in the midst of all that, mm. then the mm. issue of greed, the issue of money, immorality, mm. promiscuity mm. Is, is rushing in also. Yeah. As yeah. you rightfully put it, yeah. criminals, mm. the right and the wrong yeah. are coming in together. Yeah. Yeah. And some of those ministers who want to be arrogant and say, let them grow together. Mm. It's none of your business. Mm. Don't touch the anointed of the mm. Lord. Mm. And, and, and by the way, what if I am anointed? You are also anointed. Can I not touch you? Mm. Because the, touching the anointed, maybe they are talking to church members. Mm. But I am not a church member. Mm. I am anointed also. Mm. Don't you find in the history of the Bible where senior priests mm. and senior Levites like mm. Eli mm. were rebuking their own sons mm. in their own temples mm. who were also priests mm. in the practicing and say, gentlemen, what you are doing here mm. is not right. Don't you find yeah, some... It's not here, ethical, yeah. So, so if, when you say don't touch the anointed, are you saying members must not touch pastors or even pastors must not touch each other. Yeah. Because if I'm anointed and you are anointed, then anointing can touch anointing. Mm. I, 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 I want yeah. maybe to correct that mm. in terms of an extending theology. Uh, I, but, but while you're on that, I want to punch in the hole where occultism, 
walks into the church. And I think we had an episode mm. where we, we started actually discussing some of those issues. And I would want to hear your response on that. But, but hey. let, let me, before, oh. before he does, yeah. I want to share with you something that was sent to me. By yeah. a, I'm going to send it to you, I'll forward it to you, by a well-known prophet in inverted commas. Mm. Mm. This prophet is prophesying. But he didn't prophesy Corona, of course. Yeah, he didn't prophesy. He didn't corona. see corona, corona coming. Mm. He prophesied to this uh, young man. He says, "I see the name trust. Uh. Who is trust? Mm. Then he, the whole church keeps quiet. Then he says, "Do you know trust?" He asks this young man. He says, "Yes, I know trust. Who is trust?" He says, "It's the condom." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the only, only Piri can pull the <laughs> <laughs> oh, What man. was he seeing trust? What was trust going to do? <laughs> my God. Oh, my God. No, you can go ahead. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Piri. Yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> that, that's the closest you could remember trust. <laughs> oh, my God. And the pastor sees trust. Yeah. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you put? Yeah, no, occultism uh, came rushing and running. Mm. You know, it bested mm. the seams of the church. And it found people very vulnerable because human nature, we go through different cycles and mm. seasons. Uh, there are seasons when, like you will, you are on the high and everything is happening, is positive. Uh, there's a great flow, all your needs are met, you are progressive, prosperous, your home, friend, all is well, mm -hmm. children, everything is honky mm -hmm. But the wheel turns, and there are seasons when, like winter, everything Goes dries down. up. Mm -hmm. The leaves no fall off. Fall off. <laughs> it's no longer green. There's trouble at home, there's trouble maybe with money, there's trouble with, with friends. The tent is being repossessed, yeah, yeah. bend it down. Exactly. Isn't those Cars are going. And with us, you know, being socialized in a culture where people also embrace witchcraft. Isn't Thomas Asaham Set aside your mind mm. and now only embrace spirituality. Which in the spiritual realm, you are being bewitched. Mm. Mm. So, if you are being bewitched, you need someone to give you quick deliverance from these principalities yeah. that have come to embrace you. So, most of the people, what mushroom these uh, occultic churches is the state where people are very, very hard-pressed. Mm. And when someone is hard-pressed, normally uh, they're vulnerable, mm. you know? It's like Mao Petro told Uti, no my yini and asusa this pain. Yeah. Omunye maranga figu tinai rap rap omunye tino amanza chisa yazu. Nazi special. Nazi special. No my yini. Omunye ati kata, anything. Nange pondo bazo kata. You would say all I want. The pain must be. I want the pain to be removed. Mm. So the vulnerable and desperate children of God find themselves in this dilemma where they are looking for immediate answers. And I call that lotus mindset. Mm. You know that I must play three numbers, one, two, three, four. I've got all my answers in three seconds, in one day, in 10 days. Boom. Boom, mm. everything happens. I like a writer of a scripture who says, they that haste fall. Mm. 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 And a lot of people have fallen because they are looking for haste. Haste. Mm. Everything must happen. Now, Mushatwa Maulunge, Manzanti, Umoshe, five years. Who mm. collapse right under them? Would communication is no longer right. Irrespect is not there. There's no time. There was no building. So must who collapse room to suit? Um, prophet Maranta does a labu abu evu pumba marabu evu. We just be candid. Yeah, we, we have been known to say the truth. Yeah, so we don't need to to put gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, let's the let's issue of our fundis besebensa emit and concern. Let's just be blunt yeah. about it. 
I'm not we're using all. Mm. Some, some uh, because about to ba amba by twal. By twal. Yeah. Yeah. They go and, and carry. carry. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the elements that are driving that mm. is power. Mm. People are looking for power. Yeah. Power. People are looking for money. Yes. People are looking for, for control. For control. Yeah. People who are looking for people to come through their churches, yes. through their doors, numbers, and good people with lots of money. Yes. And their language must be visible. Mm. In some certain cases, they must mm. actually be given a tongue, mm. yeah. fork tongue of a snake. Yeah. Mm. That when I when he when he talks to you mm. and he demands something sin. from you, yeah, you cannot say not what they are looking yeah. for. Yeah. So yeah. there are various medicines yes. and portions. Yeah, and these portions really. My understanding is that people are put under a spell. It's like hypnotism. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So it's another form of witchcraft that comes or yeah. uh, expresses itself in hypnotic ways. Because some of the things that members have done. They can't remember them. The intelligent people who would process everything. Correctly. But now these people are having a blackout. I know a lady, I know a lady, yeah. someone not far from, I won't mention the place, you may know the place. Yeah. Who literally, an educated teacher. Yeah. An ex-teacher, mm. professional. Mm. But now she's slightly older, in her mm. 60s. Mm. Who sells her house mm. and gives the entire proceeds to a pastor. And this is the house that the children had also contributed to buy for the mother. The mother sells the house, now she's homeless. And the we children are now quit. suing the pastor to say, Pastor, please, Mufundus, yeah. please just bring back our mother's house. Is it too much to ask? Yeah. And the, an educated woman entered through the doors of the church. Mm -hmm. And some people say, be, 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 between these doors of the church, but once you go through the door you lose that, your mind. of that church, mm. there is a spirit that manages this mm -hmm. place, and anything that is, happens in that church, only the voice of the pastor carries. You know, Bishop, when we were growing up, mm. we, in our schools, mm. we used to have magicians mm. coming to our schools. Yeah, yeah, abra, yeah, abra, yeah. Abra, yeah. Abra, yeah. Abra, yeah. Abra, you know, they did so many things, you know, like... Taking this. eggs out of uh, yeah, people yeah, and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and if you, if you, if you perhaps mm. process, where are those magicians? I think they're in church now. Yeah, they have become pastors. Mm, that's so true. Yeah. Guys, I want us to, to move to somewhere. Yeah. You you hold this one. Yeah. Since you are taller. Yeah. You hold this one. Okay. Yeah. Since you are shorter. Okay. Yeah. Let's go towards the nice landing strip. I want us to put direction to our conversation. Yeah. There are three uh, spaces. Okay. I made this myself, so oh. don't worry. Okay. Okay. There's no witchcraft in there. <laughs> <laughs> We are not going under a spell. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to lose our minds. <laughs> so that represents the past. Yeah. That represents the present. Yeah. That represents the future. The future. Okay. You are a theologian. Past, present, future. So I want yeah. to give you a thinking tool. Mm. And even in your preaching, mm. you may find this healthy also. Yeah. I think mm. that's a gift for me to you. Okay. Mm. So when you are looking at a theological frame, is that mm. how was it happening in the past? Mm. Yes. How is it happening now in the no. present? Okay. How will it happen in the future? The future. Okay. okay. Then I'll give yeah. you the first frame mm. of thought. Mm. So we call this Western Theology, mm. which is like yeah, okay. which is like American education. Okay. Mm. We call this Northern theology, mm. which is like European education. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's call this Eastern theology, the Asianic and the Chinese, the Indians, etc. Yeah. Mm. Let's call this African education, which mm. is Ubuntu. Mm. So when you have a theological question you're asking, mm. you ask the first seven questions. Mm. Seven questions. Mm. Okay. How was it happening in the past? How is it happening in the present? How will it happen in the future? Okay. How are they interpreting it? in the west how are they interpreting it in the north mm -hmm. how are they interpreting it in the east, east? Mm. and how are we interpreting it as africans as africans okay. often mm. africans are last in terms of thinking because africans think from there okay coming back this way i'll give you one frame mm -hmm. marriage how are they getting married in the past how are they married in the present how are they marrying marry in the future then you come back again and say, how are they getting married in America? Mm. How are they getting married in, in Europe? Europe? How are they getting married in China? Mm. Ultimately, how are they getting married in Africa? But why are Africans being forced to marry Western or European style? Why are we not forcing our women, children to get married the Asian style? Then women can pay lobola for their men. Then I just understand it's a matter of the dominant culture mm. that is running on it. But mm. since you guys are theologians, mm. I'll find you a good lending. Mm. First item here, let's call it the text. 
Say that after me, Piri. Text. text. Yes. That's the time for learning now. Yeah. That is the <laughs> time the for learning. Biblical text, yeah. unadulterated yeah. in its okay. purity and in its truth. Text, yeah. It's not a friend of a human being. Yeah. It stands alone. Yeah. The text will lead us to the true church. Mm. The church cannot lead us to the text. Mm. Mm. You didn't hear me? Yeah, I heard you. It is the text, text. that must, text, uh, must take us. Is our uh, GPRS. Not the other way around. Yeah. So that's the text in its purity. Yeah. Number yeah. two, dogmatics. Mm. Where you're taking the text and say, here we think that it means. Mm. Yeah. Whether what it what we are saying it means is what it means is another story. The text says if your head causes you to sin, mm. cut it off. Cut it off. No, it means that if you have propensities towards stealing, mm. you see how you manage your hands and mm. etc. We are humush. But mm. literally reading it, mm. it will simply tell you cut it off. Yeah. So now the com confusion starts happening when people start interpre interpreting the text. Number three, let's call that denominationalism. Okay. So you have a text, you have dogma. Dogma. Then you have denomination. denominationalism. Yeah. So the fact that dogmatic says something, mm. we may all agree on the Trinity, mm. but denominations are various mm. in terms of what that means. Mm. Baptism could be mentioned here, mm. but by the time the I come text. to here, yeah. you all went to the water and it was baptized by John. Beautiful text. Mm. Come to dogmatism, you all must all be baptized. Mm. Come to denominations, mm. some baptize once, some three times, mm. some seven times, mm. some 21 times, mm. some jump fires, some mm. buy uniforms, yeah. and, and they all say it's baptism. Mm. So here comes denominationalism. Mm. Ultimately, on the corner here, we deal with spirituality. Wow. Uh, how do we practice our spirituality? So while you are sitting around your garden, I pray that you may take this tool with you and start processing many other tools. As an African, of course, mm. that's your mother on your grandmother, your grandmother on your mother's side, mm. your grandfather on your mother's side, mm. your grandmother on your father's side, your grandfather on your So that becomes a compass mm. that makes you into a human being. Mm. So for me, this is a revolving, wow. constant text mm. of how do you begin to process thinking, mm. even politically. Mm. Political. How are we running African politics? Mm. Are we running it from here? No. to there, mm. or running it from here to there. Mm. Education, for mm. example. Mm. Fashion, for example. Mm. Food, for mm. example. Mm. So for me, this is not just a piece of stick. Yeah. I hope that when you are sitting in your office, since you said you wanted to sit with me and have some theological training, mm. I thought you would have an opportunity of sitting down with Absolutely. me. Put it on a nice frame, pitch it next to your table there when you are preparing your sermons, wow. and run your sermons through that stick and see if you can be thinking wow. globally and constantly acting locally. This is amazing. Wow. This you is know. amazing. Now, now, Bishop, I want to ask you, how do we, uh, how do we start thinking the African way? Just turn the stick around, point it towards you. Okay. No, no, towards you. Okay. Africa comes first. Yeah. Then think that way. Turn it around. Mm. Turn it around. That's how you're thinking right now. Your European education is you're trying to look at your African culture through, through European. Eurocentric, uh, Absolutely. And, and you, you, it, it's not even one glass, it's yeah. three glasses. Yeah. What you are seeing is a silhouette. You can't even see the African. Mm. It's, it's very far. Mm. But immediately you turn it around and you think from ourselves as the indigenous people of the continent. And we take the text to ourselves. And say, here we are as Africans with yeah. the text, yeah. with the history, yeah. with, with the geography mm. of the text. Mm. Before we can even make dogmatics, mm. the Bible is an African book. Mm. So now how do we collect this book now and begin to formulate doctrines that are speaking to this? The American cannot understand polygamy. Mm. The African can understand it yes. because the text is closer mm. to the African themselves. So if, if that the makes sense. Of the Indians yeah. and the Chinese may mm. even understand it. Yeah, but course, but Europe closer. and this... But when you begin to talk theology in this fashion and you begin to talk polygamy, mm. you'll be out of the church before you start even finishing wow. the word polygamy. Mm. Wow. So the question is, do we think from ourselves mm. to the world? Mm. Or do we look at ourselves through foreign eyes. So, so in other words, uh, Bishop, we need to deal with uh, theological seminaries, these structures, because uh, most theological seminaries in South Africa. And beyond. You know, uh, mm. okay, let's say African. Mm. In Africa, most of uh, the people that we look up to, mm. like my spiritual father, studied mm. overseas, mm. and I went overseas to study. So mm. they interpret church history mm. from that point of view, even dogma mm. from that point of view, mm. even in terms of... Uh, uh, um, uh, um, Congregation, mm. like denomination, mm. is uh, interpreted from their point of view. Mm. So, 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 what we do when we are dealing with our members, we take them first to America, mm. 
Yeah. We colonize them. We colonize them. We colonize them yeah. first. Mm. Before any African can become Christian, mm. he must be fully colonized. colonized. His diet must be colonized. Mm. His fashion must be colonized. Yeah. His spirituality must be colonized. His funerals mm. must be colonized. Mm. His weddings must be colonized. Mm. Even the way he expresses himself, even yes. his music must, must be colonized. colonized. I have been to a church, for example, mm. when the service is running, you know, mm. Like all what you've been doing has been a waste of time. Mm. Now let's open up a hymn. Mm. Oh, now the service has started. Yeah. Because now yeah. You're singing hymn number 35. Yeah. You're singing a hymn number 69. Inspired by yeah. Mm. Now we are in church now. Mm. And the organs must be played in a background. The Holy Ghost comes mm. into the place. Mm. Because now all these African uh, demonic drums and things are like, you shut up. In front of my, mm. I even have a musician in, Africa, in South Africa here, whom you know very well. Mm. I'll tell you after the show. Mm. He was a member of our church. Mm. He was playing keyboards. Mm. And the pastor says, I will let him do a Saturn. I want to start the service now. Mm. He picked up his keyboard and he walked out of the church. Mm. To date, he's playing outside. Mm. He started one of the biggest music groups in South Africa, wow. which you all know. Mm. And you can still hear him when he sings mm. some of the Adventist hymns mm. that he is coming from, mm. from wow. our denomination. But yeah. it came out from a pastor who says, Hey, Van. Mm. So the, the, the contamination of the mm. African culture mm. is a reality which we must be dealing with. So we need to think from ourselves to the outside world, mm. rather than thinking and interpreting our own culture from the external world. I don't know, your final remarks, gentlemen, it's all up in your hands. And babies, give us some few shots about uh. what is up the bag, in your bag. Start with you, Miyama, you respond on this. Piri, maybe give us some few shots as to what we must be expecting in the seasons that are coming. Wow, you know, in uh, the next seasons which are coming of about Fundesi, we will have a lot of uh, sit-ins, but mainly will take you to our different uh, engagements where we are invited because uh, we also want to show people that as pastors, pa as pastors, pastors can also be in business. Mm -hmm. We want to sh show you talking to politicians, we want to show you talking to our families, we're going to show you talking to our congregations mm. and also to, to our communities. We'll, mm. we'll, we'll take you to, to, to a pub, you know, where we can talk to ordinary people who sit at the pub, who are stressed and distress them and give them what they deserve, which is Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm. I love that. Uh, I'm still uh, startled, uh, you know, by this Lord, this, eh? the my mind just went into another dimension. Maybe I hypnotized you, maybe. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I, I, I am not. No, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you very and, much. Yeah, but I, 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 I love the, the, the design that we are informed by Eurocentric, you know, ideologies. And somewhere before we go back, we get lost uh, because we are eternally trying to mimic Europeans and our identity is lost. Mm. And mm. there's so much confusion in every way, fashion, church, lifestyle, you know, we mirror Eurocentric or Western ways. And to be African and Afrocentric becomes something of irrelevance. And I guess that's why certain powers will continue to plunder Africa mm -hmm. because Africa is refusing to develop high level of inquiry. Mm. Anything that is fashioned and done by someone who is non-African, we accept it without questioning inquiry, mm. no questioning. Mm. Uh, we don't have a why, we don't have a why. Uh, and, uh, actually, how we hero worship uh, Eurocentrism is that Basutu they even say but um Sitare Samu Tumu Tukili Huwa. See how colonized we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that if there's no white person it means excellence is it's missing mm, is missing, it's not mm -hmm. going to be there. Mm -hmm. And and on our way we've got a lot of people who have gone through all these uh, tertiary institutions and they are skilled, they are schooled, but 
they are skilled, but they are not schooled. Mm. They went through school. Yeah. School never went through them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be, because you come into a family where you find children thinking and believing uh, that by not talking their language, they're they are eat, they're educated. Mm. Snobs. Yeah. So the colonizer has cut off their sense of self-worth, mm. mm. uh, that they should not see themselves through the eyes of an African and embrace and celebrate that which is African totally and wholly. Mm. Uh, and this straddle all over, even in politics everywhere. Mm. Uh, I, I was looking at something that disheartened me, that there's a new city that is going to be built. And uh, the developers were going to build that city where whites. Yeah. So if politicians don't believe in African solutions, yeah, yeah the 21st century must come with a miracle of mm. us looking backwards, back mm. into ourselves, mm. and embrace ourselves as an African, that as Africans we also possess the power mm. and we also possess our own solutions for our own African continent without mm. having to consult mm. with Asia or with Europe. And mm. mind you, how do you go and consult with thieves? Do you think mm. they are going to point you in the right direction? Right? You are being kind, not only thieves. <laughs> thieves and, and murderers. Mm. murderers. 400 years, they've plundered your continent. And uh, so many people have died in the ocean. Slavery, you name it, it has come and, and expressed itself in different fashions. How do you then go and entrust your life and your leadership mm. with the same people? Mm. It's, it's madness. <laughs> Absurd. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Even our high learning institution, I think people have to rewrite the curriculum of mm. preparing our African leaders for the future and mm. African children mm. to be self reliant and be very strong. Mm. That as Africans, we must find all the skills requisite mm. to create a better Africa mm. that will sweep off even in our churches mm. the nonsensical lotus mindset. I posted up a comment the other day yeah. a pastor who buys a factory. Mm. and then uh, opens the church. And then the members come into the church mm. to pray for employment. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of having half of the church mm. as a commercial portion and another church for spiritual uh, portion. And, 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 and I think we must, you know, get rid of this uh, mindset mm. that to be in church is to be associated with being number last. Mm. Yeah. You know, there so, was... So you, in one word, I mean, actually hearing you say even the church needs to be decolonized. Yeah. A lot. That, that's, that's the first place... And desire it that way, that, A lot. That's the first place where decolonization must begin. Because it started you, you know, You know, the Bible says uh, uh, the time has come for judgment mm. to begin mm. in the house of the Lord. Of the Lord. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and God is... Busy decolonizing. Mm. You know, for the fact that we are holding this conversation, mm. uh, uh, Bishop, mm. you know, this is eye-opening eye to mm. many of our young people. Mm. Maybe we might not do or talk so much to people that are old at the moment, mm. but once we plant a seed of mm. decolonization in the, minds in, of in, the young, in the minds of young people, yeah. they will change the way they preach. While the you are saying that, actually, something that when you mentioned judgment, something just popped up in my mm. spirit, mm. which is like, uh, actually, mm. Corona, Mm. Maybe let, now let me ask a weird question, <laughs> as, as I am popular for them. What are, what have been the advantages of Corona and COVID nineteen? Uh, I want us maybe to be positive. I know that may they are so rest in peace. We have lost quite a number of relatives true that, and friends. True that. But if, if we who are still alive, when we look at the bigger scheme of things, particularly when you look at our churches. I, I personally, I actually think mm. that Corona has been one of the biggest blessing that we could have ever received at any time. What could have been the advantages of Corona? And I think Corona uh, positioned uh, the church to reflect. Mm. You know, like, like myself, mm. I think uh, when uh, 
I couldn't go to church. You know, because sometimes, mm. as a pastor, you are a wounded healer. Mm. You go to church even when you are wounded. Yeah. Sometimes you push yourself to church. Mm. And you don't want to go there. Yes. And you yes, really don't want to go. go. Yeah. You don't want to preach every Sunday. Yeah. 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 But you must. If you don't, the plate will not go around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, even the ch uh, the members will be like open foodies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. Now, what in my in my personal experience, mm. it gave me time to rest and reflect wow. on yeah. myself. So the Sabbath for you. Yeah, yeah. Focus on myself. Mm. Six yeah. months, six months sabbatical. Oh. Mm. Six months. Mm. Uh, the church will never be the same. Never yeah. be the same. Yeah. 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 Uh, and for you, foodies, what when you uh, reflect? on this pandemic and the effects it has had on your spirituality and your understanding of... I mean, we would not have had this conversation yeah. Yeah. before Corona. People would think we're heretics, heretics. Yeah, but so post-COVID-19... Post mm, mm, we are no longer heretics, we are relevant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it has given the world breathing space. Breathing space. The world needed to heal itself, the rush, needed to stop mm. and it also has exposed many systems that were faulty mm. because when suddenly everything stops people start to question mm. and think and think mm. even some of the elements that are creating the global capitalism mm. and all is skewed ways uh, that is driven by greed suddenly mm. people are starting to question mm. You know. Can you believe in one of our churches? Mm. When I started doing some Facebooks, yeah. couple 2010, mm. 11, mm. 12, 13, mm. Mm. I was actually accused of using the devil's platform. Yes. I, I was, Is it? I, yes. I was, mm. I was using these, these evil platforms and uh, sharing the gospel on. Uh, and and, and, and to, to shocking enough, mm. uh, during Corona. COVID. Uh, every pastor was on Facebook and <laughs> And the office also. Mm. And the president exactly. himself was also uh, addressing members on Facebook. And I, just, I could not help it. I just stood back and laughed and said, welcome to the devil's party. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, so COVID, why is, uh, it, it, it took the world, you know, out of its spin mm. as a pandemic and mm. brought a lot of fear, but it also brought clarity. Yeah. Last question for you, Mfundi Zompiri. We've last two, three minutes, literally, boom, 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 we go quickly. Here is your question. Are we ever going to look at a time when the Christian church will unify into one denomination? Mm, that's it, that's it. Same Bible, yeah. same devil, same Jesus. Mm. Why are we not working together? Um, I'm, Talk I'm, to the nation I'm, and I'm, tell them exactly what you think. You know what I think? As much as long as we operate in the fivefold ministry, mm. it will be impossible for us to be unified because the people who follow a gift, people always follow a gift. Like even people that follow you, Bishop, mm. they follow that intellectuality. You've got your own constituency. A pastor of his own constituency, a prophet will always have his own constituency. In so. one word, it will never happen. Yeah, it will never happen. In your own words, Mfundiswam, I know you're a Pan-Africanist in your own right. Mm. Uh, where do you see Africa be coming together? And how can we use religion and spirituality as a breeding ground of common understanding? I think 21st century for Africa is a blessing. It's a blessing that the old order is fading off. Is fading off, that's the right word. And the new order is emerging. Africans are starting to believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, colonization has made other Africans to be barbaric to one another. Mm. But I believe with more knowledge, you know, expanding, and the right knowledge expanding, we will see Africans taking a lead. And I feel strongly that the 21st century is going to point to Africa as a world leader mm. and as a leader in all aspects of life and bringing profound solutions because, you know, Eurocentrism has failed the world. Yeah. It has created 400 years of chaos in the name of advancement that is skewed. Mm. where you're taking something from your neighbor and you build yourself, you become comfortable mm. and leave your neighbor in impoverished. Mm. 
That's no justice, and love has no injustice. Mm. Now, when we look inward as Africans and we are looking for a God or a spirituality that is justice, we will say there must be equality of all people. Mm. There is no race, that's a fallacy, that is superior in any way. To another. No, there is no. So even this fallacy of white supremacy, it's a shame. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's another way Efananale would have to buy a prophet or a Baba Fage under a spell. So for 400 years, uh, blacks have been under a spell of believing and subscribing to this notion that we are inferior, we cannot find solutions for ourselves, we cannot develop our own economies and our own systems mm. and our own infrastructure, is a fallacy. Mm. And uh, I thank God also for the blessing of this pandemic because it has brought out so many questions that people now are starting to question, do we look to the star called Europe or Western world for our solutions. Mm. Do we? Do we need to? Do we? Yes. Do we need to? Or do we now look for the African star wow. to lead us? You heard it for yourselves from the two esteemed gentlemen here, Pastor Moema and Pastor Piri, all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa, Galaxy Universal Network. Your host is Maponga J. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It has been an, a short three hours. I wish I could keep you here for another, for another 20, 30, uh, 40 minutes. And uh, Piri uh, is still uh, scouting for, for a wife for, for, my, for my esteemed pastor. That's the conversation of another day. I'm your host, Maponga J. Garampo, Garama Shamba, Uda Chira, Nawa Nawa Anji. Makumbe Mwana Mwisendewe Shanu. Tizu Wana Mishamba Negoro, Wana Jigarama Kumata. Until we see you again, don't do what I would do. If you decide to do it, do it better.